This protocol specifically is for individuals who have just recently had a stroke. Maybe they're out of the hospital and they are on some medications to manage the stroke. A lot of times blood pressure is being managed as well as the uh, blood thinners and some of the diuretics that might be present. But I really want to share with you, this protocol also covers individuals that might be dealing with like TBI or even some Parkinson's patients. So just know that these resources cover a lot of brain related health and wellness. Uh, my first recommendation is an herb. It's actually a beautiful flower that a lot of folks might have in their gardens right now. It is a flower called periwinkle. Periwinkle is an herbal that is a really, really good resource, especially right after a stroke for helping rejuvenate the brain cell activity and the circulation in and around the area where the stroke occurred. Many folks who have strokes, it happens out of the blue. It doesn't even necessarily mean that you have high cholesterol or high triglycerides, but it is often a sign of some impairment in the vascular channel as well as a significant amount of inflammation within the vascular system. So we're gonna target that in this protocol and we're gonna target it by using magnesium. So magnesium is a potent resource for helping eliminate the accumulation of calcium in your arteries, your veins, and your blood vessels. And when we are talking about micro vessels in our brain, we really want to take in the power of magnesium. And I like to recommend a full spectrum of magnesium. We offer mag seven or magnesium seven here, seven different forms of magnesium that are very potent at addressing the assorted body systems and the assorted mechanisms and forms of magnesium to maximize the effect of this calcium blocking. Magnesium has to be a part of any stroke victims protocol because it is very powerful at helping moving excess fluid, swelling, and inflammation out naturally via the, the blood and the lymphatic system. And folks will process out through the bowels and the digestive system. So I really love MAG-7. You definitely want to have your clinician evaluate, test your magnesium levels, and then dose appropriately. But on average, patients will take anywhere between 600 and 800 milligrams of magnesium average consumer of magnesium is deficient. So our world is about 98% deficient in magnesium. When we test patients, they have some degree, varying degree of deficiency. If you're just suboptimal or you're extremely, extremely deficient, that need, your daily requirement might, requirement might be different. Now, the third recommendation here is to use and incorporate physical therapy that is going to power up and enhance your brain health specifically activities that are balancing, that emo, you know, are immobilizing and destabilizing that not just require your core to function, but also triggers your brain to become more neuroplastic. So neuroplasticity is actually achieved by using physical therapy. And we see this in all sorts of brain injuries and brain health and improving and biohacking your brain. I have a whole masterclass on this type of methodology but you can use neuroplasticity and tapping into the balancing effect to help regrow your brain cells, to help regrow new neurons and grow and reconnect the synapses that might have been disconnected from the stroke. So this is really powerful because a lot of clinicians or brain surgeons might say, oh, we've seen, we're seeing some little degree of brain damage, but we, we also know through the data and through studies about brain health and brain cell rejuvenation that we can actually repair some of those parts. So that's powerful. The third option, or let's see, no, this is the fourth. This is the fourth option. The fourth resource here is to use specifically vitamin K2. This needs to be monitored closely. Talk with your doctor about this. Talk with your pharmacist because vitamin K2 is often going to help create a situation where there's less clotting. This not only is a preventative resource, but this is also helpful in minimizing clotting around the injured site. And so when we are healing, the body has all this whole kind of metric happening that there might be excessive accumulation or clotting of blood, blood cells. K2 is really helpful in making your blood thin, 
but also nourishing your system and using it as a preventative tool for future strokes. And there's often a high likelihood one stroke might get another stroke because of just the stress and effect of it. And also this, the environment that is within your brain and your cardiovascular system that it might occur again. So this is very helpful, but do talk first with your clinician, get your K2 tested and then dose appropriately. What I also like to recommend is what is more along the biohacking world. Biohacking your brain can include things like extended fasting, where it's not intermittent fasting. This is a totally different belt ball game. It's where you, you remove food from your diet for a period of two, three, four, sometimes five days, start slow and kind of work up to that. And you remove food and only consume liquids like great herbals, green tea, dandelion tea, but you're hydrating and mineralizing your waters with electrolytes, but you're not consuming food. And what that does is it causes ketone production, changes within your liver in terms of how you're processing your fuel, but that also has a healing effect on the brain. And so I delve into the science and the details of the exact how to do. I have a whole entire extended fasting masterclass. So if you want to take that, I walk you through what you need to do, what to expect day one, day two, day three, if you want to go up to day five and beyond. But something occurs when we have an extended fast and we reach ketosis that's called autophagy. Autophagy is cellular cleanup and our brains and all of our organs and glands and tissue turn cleans up unused, dying, not functional, old, aged cells. Autophagy is a way to create a more youthful cell. And autophagy also helps create brain neuro, the brain or what we call neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is something we want to achieve and we can do that through fasting. So I love that as a resource. And then last and final, we have brain, our, our brain health eight. So brain eight is a resource supplement that we have here that has an assortment of powerful nootropic, which are brain nourishing herbals and supplements, things like cat's claw and bacopa. And you're also going to find things like dragon's blood resin. All of these are powerful in enhancing blood flow circulation, helping enhance the nerve growth factor, which helps turn over new neurons. We also see the anti-inflammatory factor where we reduce inflammation in the body. And then we also see where we can support the nutritional composition needed in the brain to help with the healing process because stroke victims are healing and we are seeing the repair happening as their body is coming back to stasis or back to new, a new normal or sometimes back to normal. So these are all items that can help you manage a stroke, but also in some preventative ways. But most importantly, I want to encourage you to get the adequate testing, test your magnesium, test your vitamin K levels, and talk with your doctor and your, your, the doctor prescribing your medicine and talk with your pharmacist before you take any of these. We want to make sure there are no drug and herbal contraindicators, and that can happen. Herbs are powerful, but they are natural drugs, okay? So it's really important that you talk with your clinician and say, I'm thinking about taking periwinkle. I'm thinking about taking vitamin K2. Magnesium tends to be one that we have minimal contraindicators because it is a mineral and it's in so much, but it's important that you discuss that because you might be on a blood thinner, you might be on some other medicine and there might be a drug contraindicator. So be sure to talk with your doctor and I wish you happy healing if you're dealing with a stroke.